does a virtual executive <laughs> Hey fam, welcome back to another video. What is an executive virtual assistant or EVA? Now this can sometimes get confused with a general virtual assistant, but it is kind of a niche role. So in this video, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about EVAs and what they can do within your business as well and who they're for. Now, generally, if you're a super busy person and you're finding you have so many tasks on your plate within your business and you just don't have enough time to finish them all, then this is going to to serve you. So stick around and watch this video because I'm going to cover everything you need to know about executive VAs in this video right here. Now before we jump in to get all the juicy videos and the content that I put out, be sure to subscribe and like this video so that I can reach more people like you. So I scaled my business to healthy five figure months with the help of virtual professionals and international talents. So definitely know a thing or two. We've helped our clients with this as well to grow their team and to delegate. So there's definitely a few things that I have to share on the subject with you. So what is an executive virtual assistant or EVA? I think what we're finding on the online space now is that more and more people are becoming aware of their limits and their thresholds and their edges. And so what comes with this, you get to a certain stage in business before you reach the brink of overwhelm and exhaustion. So hopefully you don't meet to that point, but generally what happens here when you're growing and you're scaling is you're gonna need some more hands on deck. That's just one of the fundamental ingredients in the recipe of scaling and so this is where you get to a point of hiring some extra help and this may be an EVA for you so EVAs you generally see in in corporate structure but it can also be through online digital business and various other things as well even brick and mortar can hire an EVA I think we can all agree that we need to make the most of our time it is one of our most valuable commodities as business owners and entrepreneurs and this is where EVAs come in and can really be a lifesaver in terms of dialing in your business and really turning things into a, a machine and making it super efficient. So as a start point, an EVA is either an employee, if you choose to employ them directly, um, or they can be a freelancer that is working for you. They generally work remotely, but not always. You may have an office where you have hired an EVA to work in. So EVAs can handle a wide range of tasks. Some of the most common ones are scheduling appointments, managing your calendar, managing emails, emails, doing research on presentations, making travel arrangements. There is a wide variety of things that an EVA can do, but it tends to lean towards the admin sides as opposed to having a particular skill like a social media manager would with scheduling content. So as more executives and online business owners are embracing and, and leveraging international talent, now is about the time than ever to get an EVA or something of the sort within your team to help free up your time. You can download the guide below that's delegation cheat sheet and that's going to help you with all of your workflows and your business processes on the back end and get you thinking about a few of the things that you can actually be delegating and outsourcing now and potentially freeing up anywhere between 20 and 40 hours a week for yourself and by freeing up this time you're you're creating ample space to be able to work on the high leverage tasks within your business that are actually going to be able to move the needle forward rather than getting caught up in the nitty gritty. So in summary, an EVA, what they are is your right hand man or woman. And they're going to be the person that you go to when you're like, Hey, I need this done. Yo, can you put this in the calendar? They're going to be the person that you can lean on to delegate the small and admin ad hoc tasks within your business. So you can think of them. I'm sure you've heard of what a personal assistant is. A personal assistant can range from admin things all the way to doing your laundry and the dishes and your household stuff, depending on the agreement that you have with the person. But an EVA, EVA is kind of like an online person for that and definitely leaning towards the more admin and like organizing type of role. So think of them as an organizer. They're going to be helping you with organizing your life and having structures in place so that the meeting is on time and you don't forget meetings and sales calls and your calendar management is down packed. 
So what exactly does a virtual EVA do for you? So they can be providing administrative, creative, or technical support within your business. And this is generally from a remote location if it's a virtual online EVA. These virtual EVAs will generally work for themselves, but you may also be able to source them through agencies or companies who have a pool of talent and handle the HR and the recruitment for you and do all the heavy lifting. So essentially you give them your requirements and they go out and they steal their lineups and give you the candidate selection for you to go through the interview process. So generally within this role, you would expect someone who is highly organized and has impeccable communication and interpersonal skills for this role. You would expect them to be very proficient in using technology and also be able to work autonomously and independently as well. With the rise of online business and web 3.0, there are a lot of online businesses now that are turning to virtual assistants to help them with the day-to-day -day operations and the back end of their business. So because of this, this has created a higher demand for these roles. So the talent and the skill set that you're seeing out there now in the sea of talent and resources is ever expanding. A few extra things that you might see an EVA doing within your business is calendar management, email and phone screening, travel planning, event planning, professional networking, and even personal tasks. I'd recommend to check out this video as well about employee versus hiring a virtual assistant as well. I think that can probably help you get some clarity. If you're a bit up in the air and wondering what are the differences, what are the cost savings, what do I need to keep in mind when I'm looking at these two different roles? Because there are contractual and legal differences between the two as well, and it's a completely different model as well. So why might you need to hire an EVA? When is the right time for you? So as I mentioned earlier, we eventually, when we're in scale mode, and growing our businesses, which hopefully most of us are in, we're either in a growth or a profit stage, right? So profit is money goes up, growth is when it's kind of lining and we're like expanding the depth of our business. So generally when you're hiring, that's where, that's the growth stage where we're expanding the depth of our business and you are gonna be chucking more cash towards hires and making things more efficient within your business so that you can actually sustain and hold those parameters for scale. So when you've got team members on board, to be able to help with that. There's only so much that we can automate within our business. It'd be great if we could automate everything, but it's just not feasible. It's not how it works. So when you've automated the bits and pieces within your business that you know you're able to, generally there's gonna come a point where you need some manual, like hands-on labor in there as well to see things through and make sure they're getting done properly. So think about outreach, for example. If you're organically reaching out to people, sure you can use some automated tools for this, but there needs to be somebody in there, like having the back and forth fourth conversation, tracking it on the back end, you know, putting in the KPIs of, you know, how many people did they speak to? How many people did they reach out to? Were the engagements neutral, positive, negative, all of those things, right? And so when you're collecting that data and that information within your business and you're able to actually look back at it and say, okay, cool, well, this messaging isn't working here. We can tweak it and do this from now on, okay? Or give this a go. It's all about growing through data collection and growing through team building as well. You can only be a solopreneur for so long and and you're actually still a solopreneur, even if you have a team, but your business relies on you to work. Because ultimately you're then, the, you become the bottleneck. So if you are the bottleneck of your business and everything still needs to come through you, you could still consider yourself a solopreneur really. And it's not until you're able to identify that bottleneck and then put systems and processes and teams and workflows in place that allows the flow to come through. Because ultimately you want to be creating a business that doesn't rely wholly and solely on you. You want a team in place so that the fort doesn't come crashing down. That's what you'd want to be looking at for when you're hiring an executive virtual assistant, for example, or any team member for that matter. So if you're feeling a little bit disorganized within your business and things are just coming all over you and up in your grill and you just don't have enough time in the day to do the things that need to be done and you're sitting, lying there in bed looking, staring at the ceiling, like going through your to-do list, that's a pretty good indicator that it's probably time for you to get somebody on board, some more hands on deck. And it can be a really really beautiful experience when when you are hiring new team members because your your legacy is expanding your entity is expanding and that's exciting it's a really exciting future when you can look at hiring people 
And it's also really like it's a feel good thing as well because you're able to hire people and give them an opportunity and have them be a part of your vision and your mission as well. And it's not just you now, right? Like you've got uh, you've got a team under you. You've got a responsibility, like a, a higher responsibility now, a higher purpose. And so I found with my hires and having my team as well, that's always driven me to just go forward, putting one foot in front of the other. Like you've got people that are accountable to you and you're accountable to as well. So when you are setting goals and APIs with your team, it's like you put it out there and there's no going back now because it's like it's out there. You've decided it. If you're a good leader who has truth with their word and integrity, then you're going to follow through with that as well. So a little bit of pressure there, healthy pressure, I would say as well with having team members on board. And so it just really helps you to keep on striving forward and reaching those goals. Now I have mentioned a little bit about project management and workflows and business process and whatnot in this part here. And so I'd recommend to go check out this video, which is just a bit of a run through around Trello and how you can use it as a project management tool with your team as well. So a real life example with a executive virtual assistant might be, let's just say email and inbox management and calendar management, yeah? So you're trying to like pull a bunch of people together, maybe you've got a client over there and your schedule's all over the place and you're in different time zones and whatnot and your Calendly link's not working because the, the time schedules or the time zones don't meet up correctly. So what you could do in that case is say, hey Sally, who's your EVA, Sally, can you go reach out to George and set up a meeting with him? These are my availabilities outside of Calendly and we're going to be meeting for an hour or whatever. Okay. So you don't have to be going back and forth with your EVA or with your client George and Sally has it down packed and is communicating with with George to be able to get you that meeting all set up. So there's no back and forth through inbox and messages. And it's literally just one thing off your plate that you're not having to worry about. So that's an example of how you can see this type of relationship working. If you want to look at email management more in depth and how this can work with a virtual assistant, go check out this cracker of a video. There's a lot of tips and tricks and tools that I've put in there. And this is what I do with my team in terms of email management as well. That's a wrap guys. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video on all things things EVAs and if you want to check out this video over here this is all about virtual assistant companies and how to choose the right company for you if you are looking to get some HR and recruitment support and get that right person that right EVA in your team who is a cultural fit as well so again thanks for sticking around and if you have liked this video be sure to give me a thumbs up it helps me to help more people like you and I will see you on the next one